Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What is happening third grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. This is video number 21. All right, so I'm hoping that you have the worksheet that you need for today. If you're like, wait, there's no worksheet that goes with this video? Yeah, there's a link below or somewhere around this video. That link will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for this video along with the other episodes in this series. So go ahead and pause the video, solve number one and number two, and then come on back to check your work. All right, third grade, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check your work. So for the very first question, we have four answer choices. Let's identify that question type. What is it? It is a multiple choice question. Very good, write that down if you did not already. Multiple choice. All right, so number one says, a soccer field is shown. Here's a soccer field. Which of the following expressions that means that there are, should be no equal signs. An equation has an equal sign, but expressions do not. Look at that. No equal signs. Which of the following expressions down here represent a way to find the area of the park? When I think of area, I think of length times width. Area involves square units. So which of the following expressions represents a way to find the area of the park? So here's the park. It should say soccer field. I will change that on yours before you see it. Sorry about that. We've got some expressions here, but what this, what I'm seeing up here are two different figures, right? I'm seeing, we'll call this one the big one, and this one down here the little one, the little soccer field. Okay, so the length of the first one would be one, two, three, four, five, six units, six, and the width would be one, two, three units. Then for the little part of our soccer field, we have a length of one, two, three, four units, and a width of one, two units, okay? So essentially what we would have to do is multiply those. We should have something like two times four for the little one, and three times six for the big one, and when we have the two areas, we then combine them together to by adding them. Two times four is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And three times six would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. To get a total of when we add eight plus 18, that's 26 square units. Okay, so now let's go through each one. So we have two times four plus three times six. Well, that's just what we have. That is most 
definitely the correct answer, but we're gonna take a look at all of them just to make sure. Here we have two times four, yep. We have three times six, yep. But what is not correct about this one? Yeah, the multiplication sign right there. We aren't multiplying the two different areas, we're joining them together through addition. So no, I circled what was wrong there. For C, we have six plus six plus six. Well, I could see that being six plus six plus six, that would be correct. And then four plus four plus four, well, where would I find that? Maybe right here, four plus four, but we're missing another four. So this one is what makes it wrong. I'm gonna eliminate there. And then finally we have five times six. Five times six would be, ah, oh, nah, here come the fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. You'll know them all shortly. 30, 30 square units, but my area was actually 26 square units. So which one is the correct answer here? It's A, very good. Let's look at number two. Number two, it says match the figure with its correct area. Again, when I think of area, I think of length times width and remembering to write square units. So when I'm finding the area, I'm multiplying the length times the width. I'm gonna solve this two different ways, each one. I'm going to use a model and then I'm also going to use the multiplication mashup. So here we have our length is 10, our width is two. So now we have 10 times two. I'm gonna change it to two times 10. I'm gonna use the um, commutative property there and do two groups of 10, which would be 10 plus 10, which is what? 20. So it is 20 square centimeters. Fabulous. However, I'm also going to use the multiplication mashup to help. I'm going to do the 10 song first, okay? Is it too late to learn your tensies? 10, 20. Got it or the two song first and get 10 fingers up. Do you know I know my twos? Two, four, six, two, four, eight, six, eight, eight, 12, eight 10, 12, 14, 14 16, 16, 18, 20, 20, 20, 20, got it, got it. Okay. both ways, okay. The next one, the we, next have one we have a length six. of six and a width of four, so six times four. I'm gonna do six groups and do four in each. One, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So it should be 24 square centimeters. Now let's use the multiplication mashup to help us. Let's do the six song first. Hey sixes, I just met ya. It kind of crazy. 6, 12, and 18, 24. Got it. Or the four song. If you know you fours and you should sing along with me. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. Got it. Three times in a row. Got it. 24 centimeters. By the way, you should totally check out the multiplication mashup that you can find on YouTube. It is helping kids all over the world. For the next one, we've got a length of seven centimeters, a width of three. So we're doing seven times three. You know what? This time I'm going to do a an array. I'm actually going to use the commutative property of multiplication, switch it around, go three down, one, two, three. Already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Boom. Now it would be seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, one-zo, which would be H. 21 square centimeters. Now let's use that multiplication mashup. Let's start with the seven song. What was the song for the sevens again? Oh wait, I got it. It goes like seven, 14, 21, 21. All right, now let's do the three song. Hit me with my threes pretty please. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. You can get it either way. All right, now if I were taking the test, would I use all of the different strategies? Probably not. I would pick the one that feels the best to me because with multiplication, it's really cool. You can use an array. You can draw out groups of equal things. You can use a number line. You can use repeated 
addition. You could use the multiplication mashup. There's so many strategies. Multiplication is awesome. Uh, at this time, go ahead and make any corrections that you need to make to your paper. And then I want to point you in the direction for some more practice videos. If you're like, I really need some more help with finding the area and we're going to get to it right now. All right, third graders, fabulous third graders. Here's the dealio. If you know that you need some more practice, I want you to check out the link below for McCarthy Math 155 Unit 7. If you're enjoying this Math FSA boot camp series, then you are going to love McCarthy Math 155. Check it out. I also want you to check out Unit 7. That's the perimeter and area unit of McCarthy Math 155. And what does the 155 stand for, you ask? That's a great question. The 155 stands for 155 videos per grade level. And y'all, teachers and parents who are homeschooling and schools and districts are using this as a daily math intervention to help fill in the learning gaps and they are loving it now in order to access this program you do have to become a member but the cool thing is everybody can try it out for free for seven days to see if it's the right fit for you i really think that you're gonna love mccarthy math 155. the next link below is to my how to pass the math fsa series this was a series i created several years back when the fsa say for third grade was a computer-based test. It's not a computer-based test anymore. It's paper-based test, which is why I created the Math FSA Boot Camp series, this one that you're watching. But you could still go watch my previous series, How to Pass the Math FSA, to get some more help with this particular standard. So check it out. I'd love for y'all to follow me on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. That way you can stay in the loop with everything that I'm releasing into the world. I'm also on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. In fact, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And if you enjoyed this episode, if you could take a quick second to smash that like button, not for me or to make me feel good, but to support my mission. You see, there are so many students out there who struggle with math. Math. And I am on a mission to help them to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as I possibly can. So when you smash that like button, it kind of spreads the word that, hey, kids who are struggling with math, come watch Ms. McCarthy's video. She can help you. And I really appreciate you taking the time to take a second to smash that like button. And finally, before we go, I just want you to know, I always love to remind you that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because we have, do you see these third graders here? We have a whole new generation of world changers. That's you getting ready to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, choose kindness and you always have that choice and oh my goodness y'all i cannot wait to see you all on the next episode bye guys <laughs>